historians have had many different ideas about what the ark looked like with information from the Bible. We believe this model is an accurate representation of Noah's ark. Now as to size, God's instructions to Noah were to build the ark 300 by 50 by 30 cubits. A cubit in ancient days was a measurement of the distance from a man's elbow to his fingertips, anywhere from 18 to 22 inches. Using the smaller measurement, 18 inches, we can estimate that the ark Noah built would have been 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. It resembled a long rectangular box, a rectangular box larger than 20 college basketball courts. Shipbuilders have discovered that the ark's length to breadth equals a ratio of six to one, meaning it would be a slow moving vessel, but one of the most stable vessels ever built. So stable, in fact, that the U.S. battleship Oregon, built around the turn of the century, was designed with the exact same ratio. The arc design ratio also means greater capacity, greater safety in operation, and always calls for a smaller crew. Dr. Henry Morris, a former professor of hydraulic engineering, has done a great deal of work in connection with the Ark of Noah. We spoke with him in his office. Dr. Morris, we've been studying the design of the Ark with an eye to its seaworthiness and its stability. And the question is very simply, would it have been a stable craft? Yes, as far as we can calculate it would, in terms of the forces, the hydrodynamic forces involved, that this would be very stable. In fact, you can show that the balance between the buoyant force and the gravitational force and the wave force and so on would be such that the Ark would ride itself if it were have tilted uh, anywhere up to 90 degrees, any, anywhere from zero to 90 degrees, in other words. The riding effect would be such that it would just uh, come right back up again. It'd be practically impossible to capsize. Using the information given to us by Dr. Morris, we took our model of the Ark and placed it in the test tank at the Marine Laboratory. When subjected to the irregular waves generally found on the ocean, the Ark was deemed not only seaworthy, but exceptionally stable. Then the test tank duplicated waves equivalent to 200-foot tidal waves, waves far larger than the Ark would have experienced during the flood. Again, the Ark was not only seaworthy, but extraordinarily stable. Like the giant ships of today, the Ark's low center of gravity gave it a tremendous stability. The deeper it sank into the water because of its heavy cargo, the more stable it became. It had no rudder, no sails, no oars. Remember, the ark wasn't meant to go anyplace. It was simply meant to float.